through so many iterations over the course of time. It's it's a question of, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> it's a neurotic UI person that, that must be doing this. Yeah, it looks good. All right. We're, we're good. Cool. So, um, so, so Mike, let's switch back over to that, uh, to the kickoff screen, to the agenda. And I'm, I'm still seeing a, a Udacity page. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, I, I we're I think we're ready to go. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, let's get started. It's just a little bit after the top of the hour. Thanks all for joining me, uh, joining us. Uh, I'm going to be very brief uh, and and basically introducing Mike McCoy as our new HC Sig chair uh, to the organization. Uh, we uh, thanks for everyone for your involvement in the election. Uh, the election came and went uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and thanks everyone for your involvement. It was a, a good opportunity uh, to help sort of get uh, set the guidance for the organization going forward. Uh, and Mike, I think, will be uh, doing a great job uh, in sort of coming up with some new ideas uh, of his own to put uh, some spin to this uh, to this great membership. Uh, and so I'm going to just sort of settle over, uh, fade back into the background here, and hand over to Mike. Mike. Oh, and you're muted. You're muted, Mike. Of course I'm muted. So <laughs> there you go. Cool. Thank you very much for uh, the guidance and everything this past week and, and carrying this group for two years. It's very much appreciated and this wouldn't happen without you. So I, I thank you very much for that. Um, everyone, welcome to the healthcare special interest group here and in the Hyperledger community. My name is Mike McCoy. Uh, a little bit of an introduction for myself for those that may not be aware of myself. I am currently the Director of Platform Integration and Technical Partnerships at Consensus Health. And I'm also, uh, Consensus Health is a spinoff of Consensus AG, the parent company that, that those that are familiar with the blockchain space may be pretty familiar with. I'm also an adjunct professor at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital here in Philadelphia, where I'm part of the Institute of Emerging Health Professions. We teach a course every year that highlights something new within the healthcare life science space particularly it's mostly based for clinicians, administrative folks, as well as those in business strategy. And uh, this year our course is gonna highlight more data science components as last year was more blockchain. This year is gonna highlight more AI machine learning and some aspects of privacy enhancing technology that are part of cryptography and, and the broader blockchain space. Uh, before we get started, I want everyone to give introductions to themselves, but uh, per our rules here within the, the Hyperledger Special Interest Group, we want to address the antitrust policy, pretty much means that uh, you don't want to be able to share industry secrets here. We want to be able to keep everything uh, pretty open within the group and uh, anything that could be potentially compromising shared in this group, please uh, do, not, do not share that. And we'd like to be able to um, prohibit any Linux Foundation meetings from uh, potentially being uh, any part of antitrust. Don't share anything you wouldn't want the broader group to see. All right. And now for those that are new to the group, please uh, introduce yourselves. I believe we have uh, Leah. Leah's a new addition to the group. Hi, Mike. Uh, thanks, for, thanks to everyone for um, yeah, allowing me the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm Australian. I live in Paris. Um, I'm CEO founder of Qua Factor, which is a blockchain-based traceability platform that looks at uh, medication supply chains, um, medical devices and healthcare, so personalised health records on blockchain. Um, my background is a clinical pharmacist in Australia, and then I went into digital technologies, robotics, and 
in the last two years have been working on blockchain projects, including a pilot for medication delivery to Venezuela, and most recently on a personalised health record for patients, a women's health program in Malaysia. So, yeah, thanks. Awesome, great introduction, Leah. And then uh, if we could have Ravathi, I am not familiar with you, but you may be a, a constant member of the group. So if you could introduce yourself for my, for my being. <laughs> Hey, uh, sure. Um, congrats, first of all, Mike. And uh, my name's Ravati, but you can also call me Ray or Raves if that's easier. Um, I work across four continents, but right now, at least during lockdown, I'm in India. Uh, and uh, amongst the various hats I wear, I am on the board of P2P Foundation Network, which is research for P2P based uh, technologies, principles. I'm also a member of Collab Cooperative, which is a transnational tech cooperative. Uh, I'm a member of Lushare, which focuses on collaborative economy. Um, as an intersection of several of these hats, there are a few projects that I'm a part of, which looks at um, healthcare data ownership and data cooperatives and uh, deriving benefit from that for elders, um, seeing as they are especially vulnerable to the to health emergencies like the pandemic and the data insights that are really beneficial there. Um, I'm, uh, I'm also a huge proponent of open source and I try to make to these group meetings more often, but unfortunately I don't make it as, usual, as often as I would like to, which may be true for a lot of us. So I'm really excited to be here and nice to meet you all. Awesome, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Mahul, if you could give an introduction for the group, as you may not be, you may be a new member to the Hyperledger uh, Healthcare Special Interest Group, but you are part of the Hyperledger community, so please share, share your introduction. Well, uh, th thank you, Mike. Uh, uh, Mehul Shah with uh, Infinity Services. Uh, we are a Hyperledger dev shop uh, doing a fair amount of work in the supply chain space and uh, looking to find uh, you know how i can contribute my uh, skill set to the healthcare space because i i see so much uh, so many good use cases coming up and and i want to expand my horizons as well so i'm here for two purposes first off is you know learn more about how the healthcare space is contemplating the use of blockchain Specifically, I'm interested in how Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Indie can be leveraged. And on the flip side, you know, being technically proficient, I want to work towards more than just conversations. You know, I want to actually get involved with, uh, you know, actually creating POCs and things along those lines and would be very interested in, in talking with folks who would, you know, like to take that idea forward. So yeah, thank you, Mike. Awesome, thank you for that. And also, if we can get an introduction, uh, everyone probably knows this individual, but Brian Bellendorf, if you could say a few words and, and your experience with the Hyperledger uh, Special Interest Group as well. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Brian Bellendorf, Executive Director of Hyperledger. Uh, and uh, first off, thank you, uh, Rich, uh, for the, the handoff uh, to uh, Mike. Uh, congrats, uh, and, and th really thank you for uh, all of your leadership as the chair of the Healthcare SIG, uh, and congrats, Mike, uh, uh, for uh, leading this from, from, from now forward. I, and uh, um, the Healthcare SIG was actually the very first special interest group that was launched. Um, uh, partly, I had spent a year working for the Department of Health and Human Services about 10 years ago on open source software as a way to accelerate health information exchange and walked away with that, <laughs> recognizing that one of the biggest issues was trust between individuals uh, and, and healthcare organizations and between healthcare organizations themselves. And so when I jumped into the blockchain space, realized that that was going to be a really big opportunity opportunity for this technology um, uh, and so uh, I was I've been really happy to see this healthcare seg be a, a, a real activity uh, uh, a locus of activity around this domain and help help spark a lot of great conversations and projects so um, again just really happy to see the the peaceful transition of power <laughs> um, and uh, I, I yeah, really always excited about what this thing can do awesome thank you 
and uh, anyone else, uh, feel free if, if you would like to provide an introduction for new members. Um, I know Guillermo has been here a bunch. Alicia has been here before. So uh, Erica is our uh, is our um, is our vice chair as well. So uh, if anyone wants to provide an introduction, please. Mike, I, I don't know if this is the right place, but if I can add one more thought, please. Sure. So, so just last week, I joined this organization called uh, Fight Pandemics. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I, I'm going to be contributing my expertise to the blockchain use cases. Yeah. That, that particular volunteer organization is, uh, is, is uh, contemplating. Yeah, so we can um, we'll get into that later in the in the general meeting as we go over um, potential opportunities and as well as we have this COVID nineteen virus pandemic support uh, uh, section of the meeting as well. So if we could just get into that more details uh, later on, I think that'll that'll be part of the conversation. But yeah, I, yeah that sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Cool. Awesome. Hi, hi, Mike. This is Guillermo speaking. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, and and uh, it's a pleasure to know that uh, you are now leading uh, uh, the SIG. Uh, congratulations for that. Uh, I believe that uh, you are going to do a great job. And let me tell you a little bit about my background information of what I'm doing here in Mexico. I'm part of the. I have a company, a small company, but it's a very niche company. I have a e-health record uh, that came from uh, uh, California, and also I have another agreement uh, with a Brazilian company who is uh, doing a, uh, some kind of integration with the blockchain in the healthcare system in Brazil. Now we are trying to do the same thing in Mexico because I'm part of the committee of uh, an organization that the name is Amiti. I'm part of the uh, group that helped to the government uh, with new technologies and how we can use that technologies to help into the healthcare system, either from the public sector to the private sector. So, so I'm glad to know that uh, uh, you have a, a you know, that, that experience, because I believe that in our countries, uh, development countries, this will be a great asset to us. So thank you very much and congratulations again. And of course, Rich, congratulations uh, also for letting us to know about the SIG in the past years. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much for that. And and there, uh, one of the missions I want for this group is for in the future for us to have working groups that are uh, direct and pertinent and can actually be implemented for industry. And uh, a lot of that will, will incorporate some design sessions for open source collaboration and then helping out the subgroups, in particular our patient member subgroup, our payer subgroups, and our healthcare interoperability subgroup uh, have more direct uh, resources, uh, scope, and and a lot of other things associated with that. So we hope to create more collaborative working groups out of this for sure. Sounds terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Guillermo. So uh, we went through introductions. Thank you, everyone, for all that. Um, as uh, Rich posted in our chat, if you want to consider adding your contact information, if you are new, please add it to the HCSIG membership directory here so that others that are part of the SIG, if they want to be able to look you up or find people with similar interest, they can be able to do so here. So anyone new, you could be able to check out that membership directory. Uh, community announcements. Uh, do you have any announcements, anyone, that you'd like to share or that were shared in the Rocket Channel this past week? Anybody, please. Uh, uh, this, this is Guillermo again. I'm not sure if this is important for, for you because uh, we are going to have a Congress in Mexico uh, with this uh, uh, organization that will be held in the 26th and 27th, uh, August 26th, 27th. Of course, it's in Spanish. It will be uh, online 
and I can share that information just if uh, somebody could you share uh, that in the chat, like please? To... Do you have a link or, or uh, detailed information? And also you can email me uh, too. I'll put my, my email in the chat. For everything um, Hyperledger relevant, I'm going to probably use my personal email so that it doesn't conflict with work things. So you can email me just at this one, this email right here. So feel free. Okay. Okay, got it. Tomorrow it will be uh, announced. So as soon as I have the link, I will share with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I'll put that in email to the group and, and feel free to add it in Rocket Chat as well. Sure. Thank you. Any other announcements from anyone that is part of the group here? Yeah, Mike, one suggestion. Yes, please. So I'm looking at the member directory, and would you be averse to having me like go in and sort the list alphabetically? Sure. And reorganize it. I haven't been able to organize it yet, but yes, you you could do that. Uh, feel free to. It would probably be best to do that. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you all for that. Uh, now we're going to our strategic, or sorry, special interest group sub update, subgroup updates. Uh, we do not currently have any members of the subgroup uh, that are a part of the meeting currently to give an update. But uh, Rich, do you have any um, prior knowledge or, or updates that you heard from either Denise, Ravish, or Steven? Sure. Yeah. So Dennis is, uh, he's out traveling. I believe uh, we just got a little note from him that he, he's in Istanbul for the next couple of weeks. So he's on vacation uh, or a holiday. Uh, as far as the patient subgroup goes, uh, uh, as, as lead, they've been working on an e-consent solution. Uh, it's actually a very successful uh, product uh, that they're working on. Uh, they have some engagement back in Europe uh, with some of the larger pharma organizations. Uh, this solution is actually uh, done in parallel, uh, so they're using both Fabric and Sawtooth to demonstrate uh, functionality for this product uh, using both platforms. Uh, and in fact, one of the things that we probably want to reprise, uh, Mike, would be to have them provide uh, an update on some of the work that they've done and specifically a discussion around the value add of either Fabric or Sawtooth because uh, it's a rare thing when we have uh, domain expertise in both so very, very closely together. So that I think might be something to consider going forward. Uh, their team meets uh, every other week. Uh, and so uh, feel free to sort of loop in uh, with Dennis and his team. Uh, I believe they meet every other Friday, if I recall. Uh, and it's, uh, oh gosh, I want to say 9 o'clock Pacific. Uh, I think it's or, one, yeah, nine, yes, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern. Yes, I think it's, uh, well, let, me, uh, let me double check that. So tick, tick, tick. Uh, every, other, every other Friday at seven Pacific, which would be 10 Eastern, unless that's changed. Um, so let's see, for payer subgroup, uh, that's Ravish's team and they are working on a sort of a next generation pharmacy uh, product. Uh, they have uh, they have their product uh, in uh, Hyperledger Labs. Uh, they're actively developing against it. Uh, a couple couple months ago, or a couple of meetings ago, they did a presentation uh, on that product. Uh, it's been so far uh, pretty well designed. It's uh, in active development. Uh, they're always, of course, looking for additional engagement uh, from membership. So uh, that would be a great opportunity to get involved in their group. Uh, they also meet every other week. Uh, and so you may want to contact uh, Ravish regarding that. Uh, and then our most recent, the Healthcare Interoperability Subgroup, uh, uh, oftentimes referred to as HIS, uh, is run by Steven. And that's a really cool subgroup. Uh, they are very technical. Uh, they're using Fabric uh, to develop a semantic interoperability platform. Uh, and of course, uh, semantics being slightly different from syntactic. Uh, understandings and so semantics that's a real tough nut to crack and so they're really focused on uh, on that use case uh, I believe it's immunization specifically that they're looking at 
uh, and he meets uh, with, with his group uh, again every two weeks. I believe it's on a Monday morning. Uh, so it might be worth uh, looping in with Stephen if you have a, a, a very specific technical sort of background uh, as it relates to interoperability in the healthcare space. So I think that's sort of uh, where we stand with our updates. Yeah, usually we'll, we'll have uh, representation here for the subgroup teams, either the leads themselves or the proxies. Uh, but I think uh, I know a couple of folks are certainly on holiday. Um, and so that's sort of where we stand. Thank you for the update. Next up, we're gonna go into the ad hoc team updates. So uh, the Wiki redesign team, I don't think we have anyone part of that at the moment. Rich, do you have any kind of background for that for that group? Yeah, this is just an ongoing request. So uh, if for, for anyone that has an interest uh, or, or expertise with Confluence specifically, we're always looking for folks to help out. Uh, this is really reflects uh, some of the work that we want to do internally for the, for the SIG itself, uh, as well as uh, some broader design ideas or concepts as they relate to uh, all SIGs. Uh, with the intent of allowing members to sort of move a little bit e easier between uh, special interest groups with sort of a common understanding of, uh, of usability. So uh, we're, we're just, it's always, this is just going to be an ongoing thing, I think. Uh, and, and really it's a driver for, for looking for, for really good, uh, very smart folks in the space as it relates to uh, design and interface experience. And so, yeah, if, if you have deep expertise with Confluence. We'd love to get you involved. It'd be a great way to sort of help uh, drive, uh, really facilitate engagement with uh, new membership particularly. Does anyone here on the current chat uh, have experience with Confluence or interface design that would like to have a session uh, next week to discuss this or are connected with anyone as well? I've used it, Mike, but I don't have any um, experience with the design as the back-end design, but um, I've used it and it's pretty effective to use for your team managing it. Yeah. That's all I can contribute. Okay. Well, we can message separately about that as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that, Leah. Awesome. Let's go off to an update with uh, our friend Erica and about the use case development team and what's going on with that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, so this group, uh, Rich has kind of gone over this before, was originally created uh, for HIMSS to kind of give a high level overview of some of the practical applications of Hyperledger in some healthcare use cases on a really high level. Um, and I'm actively working on the use case that um, I've gotten a little feedback on from another member. So my plan for the group is to complete as much as I can of the supply chain, drug supply chain use case that I'm working on. And this is written on a Hyperledger template, um, and we're going to add some visual graphics to it. There's three other use cases, provider credentialing, uh, use cases involved in the payer industry, and medical records that I'm actively looking for. Um, people to work on. Uh, we haven't had a meeting in a while because I really wanted to get my use case kind of um, off the ground and present it. So um, I will be scheduling a meeting and I'll be reaching out to the group to see what, um, who, wants to, who wants to be a part of it. Dennis has, has sat in on the meeting, meetings before. Um, a couple of the other members in, in the group have fallen off. So I'll, I'll kind of be trying to revamp it here shortly. All right, thank you very much for that update, Erica. I don't mean to go back into the past, but we do have Stephen Elliott who has joined us here. Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome, Hi, Mike. <laughs> Welcome. Pleasure so I, to I don't. Yeah, I don't often make these meetings. Uh, they're between actually between meetings, so I have a hard stop in about five minutes. But I do. I did want to say uh, thanks so much, Rich, for. Everything you've done for uh, the Hyperledger Fabric Special Interest Healthcare Group. Um, without your efforts, uh, we would be, uh, we probably wouldn't have a group. <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. So I appreciate it's, it. Uh, and your wisdom is, is, is been, has been very, very helpful and pushing things through. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, obviously, this group exists uh, by virtue of the, all the members that are involved in it. So it's, it's, it's really about, orchestration and that's really about it. It's letting the good people do their job. Yeah, it's it's terribly difficult to, to find the time to do this on a consistent basis, but your consistency has been uh, 
has been a real uh, goal for me to try to emulate. So thanks so much. Thank you. And welcome aboard, Mike. Uh, I don't think we've ever met, but uh, nice to uh, nice to virtually meet you. Where are you from, Where are you at right now? I'm based in the great city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So okay, okay. Yeah, I'm on the east. I'm on the west coast in San Diego, but my my job is really sort of on the east coast, which is why I'm so busy at this hour. Yeah, that's uh. By the way, I love San Diego. Been there many a times. We have a couple of members of the Consensus Health team that live there as well. So uh, welcome. Oh, Welcome to our group, I guess, for the next three minutes. If you have any updates in regards to the, the healthcare interoperability subgroup uh, that you could uh, give to some of our members. So we've been meeting reasonably consistently over the last several months. <clears throat> uh, at the moment right now, a snapshot of where we are is really deciding how to implement uh, a policy of consensus called proof of interoperability. Uh, basically drilling through the FHIR model down into terminologies and ontologies such as SNOMED and uh, LOINC RX norm uh, for uh, some standard terminologies that we can use to validate data uh, so that we can then say, well, everybody in the consortium now agrees that, uh, you know, sex should be represented by some kind of uh, undisputable mean of, uh, of sex. And there could be other interpretations of sex, but, you know, uh, so that's really sort of our definition of what semantic interoperability really is, is taking that definition of sex, which is not really a use case. The use case is immunization, but I think sex sort of brings out the different interpretations that you can have and why it's so important to be able to say that the data is semantically interoperable. Anyway, uh, we're sort of working through that at the moment. Uh, also have an opportunity to do this with uh, AWS. They have a Hyperledger Fabric uh, stand up there. Um, initially, I looked at it and it was looked fairly good, but then I looked at it a little closer and it was very expensive. Uh, but then they gave me a $300 grant, which is uh, actually going to defer some of that cost. So I'll go back and take a look and see if the price makes any difference. Uh, but I would like to do it with AWS. Uh, I'm an AWS uh, associate uh, architect. Uh, so it's, it makes sense for me to be able to do something like that. And I think it's good for Hyperledger to be able to take some kind of a commercial grade uh, uh, fabric uh, implementation, see if we can wrangle that and put things like proof of interoperability there. So I got to go. I really do. Uh, I apologize for not making more of these meetings. Uh, but I did want to take this opportunity to say thank you very much, Rich. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. Hopefully I'll be able to make the next one. Are we going to be meeting at the same time, Mike? Um, so that's another, I'm going to send out a survey out to the group. I'll mention this towards the end, but I want to try and uh, see if uh, maybe, I know Fridays for some people have given me feedback in, in messaging that uh, Fridays are a bit t difficult for them to be able to come onto a call. So I want to send out a survey and try and get uh, a one, two, and three time slots that, that, are, that are best for the group as well as um, potentially, I've talked to David Boswell, who's the Hyperledger community lead, about mm. having um, an, an Asian-friendly time and then a, like a West and Eastern-friendly time uh, pretty much for the world. So we are in talks of trying to coordinate that. And, uh, and yeah, survey will be sent out early next week. Okay, well, I gotta jump. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. How about, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, before we you drop, uh, do, you have, do you have a a way of coordinating uh, this interoperability project. I'd love to engage with you. I'm, I, I was a, involved in this this conversation about gender and biological sex in HL7 for <laughs> years. As a clinical geneticist, I, I really got to drop. There's a there's a special interest page. Uh, Rich can point you in the right direction. You can always get in contact with me by email. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Have a great Friday. Thank you. Me too. So that was for the interoperability subgroup in our mm -hmm. special interest group. Yeah. yeah. Or is that yeah. in the semantic? Uh, no, no, it's 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 through the through the SIG. Let me grab the uh, the URL. Hold on, just a sec. Do you have his email, Rich? Could you potentially add it in the chat? Um, I'm not too comfortable about that, but uh, I'll uh, I'll double check. I'll loop back around with Stephen on that. Thank you. Uh, so the link link yeah link is in chat. Okay, cool. Because I struggled with this, I think, because uh, semantic interoperability is so important, and uh, 
and there's uh, I, I, we've struggled with this in the uh, the HL7 clinical genomics working group, and mostly about three, maybe five years ago, when this whole biological gender sort of actually started popping up and how to represent that. And we were uh, front and center of actually how to model this. Uh, well, good. Uh, and I'm just looking ahead here. So uh, I'm going to copy over his email because it is public uh, on the page. So I just sent that over. So yeah, Jonathan, it'd be great to, to sort of sync uh, with Stephen on that. Uh, like I said, uh, what's one of, the, one of the great things about that, that particular subgroup is it is uh, 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 Stephen's driving and he's, he's a really bright guy. Uh, it tends to be very technical uh, and there's a lot of uh, sort of meat on the bones and it's, it's really good to sort of dig into it. Uh, so interoperability, if that happens to be something of an interest to you uh, or you have some expertise around it, that would be great. Um, I, you know, uh, some of my, my background is interop uh, as well, and so it's really cool to see that Stephen's taking uh, taking the hard road on this, which is semantic interoperability, which is really tough stuff, uh, and and moving forward. So yeah, good good to know that there's a little uh, that you have some interest in that. Awesome, thank you. So. Uh... For unfinished business here, we have since early March that the Hyperledger Special Interest Group has focused on collaborative identity, uh, identifying COVID-19 virus pandemic solutions. Uh, special get, thanks to everyone that was able to continue with that. Uh, this is mentioned by Rich two weeks ago, but we want to continue to thank everyone who has been uh, very um, how can I say this, involved in trying to uh, collaborate more so within the Hyperledger community to to help uh, as an aid for COVID-19 virus pandemic support. Um, here are some funding uh, programs that are that have been posted since July uh, that are updated about a month ago. I'm sure we could have another update that is on there as well. I have to update this wiki personally uh, moving forward. So that will be coming in the next two weeks. Um, any other, does anyone mention any details or any other funding resources they are aware of? for COVID-19 related support in relation to blockchain technology? Yeah, and Mike, uh, just, just real quickly. So those updates are re really reflective of the sites themselves. And so if we see any updates to the sites, those get pushed forward. Uh, so you'll see that some of those sites really don't update too often, uh, which is probably a good, in, a good, good uh, indication that um, uh, not a whole lot of attention has been paid to it by those organizations. So, uh, so generally speaking, if they're regularly updated, they tend to tend to be a, a fresher opportunity or more more engaged opportunity. Awesome. All right, and uh, and moving on from the COVID nineteen funding opportunity. Sorry, Mike. Oh. Mike, I've just um, put a link to Creative Destruction Lab. They've got a program for funding as well, or um, workshops. Or um, lib I think they use the Libra fabric, and so that's a, a grant that's available as well, or a program. So they use Facebook Libra, you said? Yeah, I think theirs is based on. Yeah, but mm -hmm. anyway, sorry, <laughs> probably not appropriate, but anyway. No, it's appropriate. Just, yeah, just to know what's going on out there. <laughs> that's interesting stuff. I'll definitely yeah take that for note. Yeah. Awesome. So the new business for them, the group is uh, pretty uh, straightforward, I would say. So uh, I'm joining now as the chair of the group, uh, trying to do a great job in filling rich issues. And, and I think mostly I want to try and fill the consistency that he's being able to bring to this group. That's the biggest thing with any, any meetup group, any working group is, is being able to consistently have uh, beneficial ideas, thoughts, and and uh, generating of solutions. So I, I hope to you know, do half of what he's been able to do for this group in the past two years. Uh, some thoughts though in, in ways I would like to see the, the SIG pr progress is um, it's very beneficial because from the SIG perspective, we have a wider lens and then the subgroups were able to go down to the weeds and be able to, to work on specific problems of industry. One, I think uh, additions of a couple subgroups may be beneficial, especially those incorporating other groups within Hyperledger, uh, as I believe Hyperledger Avalon and, and Trusted Compute Framework are gonna be uh, another uh, subgroup that can add into the healthcare uh, 
into a subgroup of uh, privacy enhancing technology or decentralized AI. Those type of concepts and, and frameworks, I think there's, we're getting a need from industry and adding aspects of federated learning working groups within the healthcare SIG could be truly beneficial as well. I also believe that we could uh, have another, uh, we would like to expand more on the use case development subgroup that Erica is leading with us. I, I think that is very key for uh, clinicians and administrative and, and people that are working in the trenches to understand how this technology can truly benefit their everyday uh, aspects of work. So I wanna be able to, to raise up those working groups for sure, as uh, we already have some pretty successful ones. Uh, I wanna give more options for people to uh, attend this type of meeting. Uh, and maybe we'd have one time a, a month where it would be split to uh, people that are based more in EMEA and Asia, and then another that would be based for more in the, the Americas and, and potentially uh, parts of Europe as well. So more, just more uh, flexibility in the scheduling of how we could be able to conduct these meetings will be beneficial. Along with uh, specific POCs and pilots that could be demonstrated here that are more mature in their concept rather than being um, early stage. And, and yeah, just connecting more of the broader industry together because at some point in the process, someone's using a hyperledger tool set or technology within their stack, whether it's in the areas URSA, whether it's fabric for zoo, sawtooth from the DLT perspective. Uh, I wanna also help highlight some of the other technologies for people of healthcare and life science and how they can be able to benefit from using these other tools as well. And uh, those are just a couple initial thoughts, but that's enough from me. I wanna hear from others that have been part of the group for a while or that are just new to the group, how they believe this type of forum could be of benefit to them most. And please don't be shy, anyone can speak up. Well, I think, uh, so Mike, you know my interest as far as I'm very deeply technical and actually I love to code and, uh, and but I think it's, this is a higher level group and I, I think we, probably the intersection of the, uh, healthcare, the technology and the governance is a great sort of mix of touching on each of those. And um, cause I think the, the tech, I'm very well versed in the technology, but I think um, I'm still struggling with governance and trust models and, and like certain examples of like the COVID-19 and uh, emerging applications of like AI uh, smart agents to actually do um, create insights or, or uh, cr uh, credentials, et cetera, for uh, healthcare. And this is an uh, ongoing discussion. I know uh, I'm on the ABMS, American Board of Medical Specialties, uh, AI subgroup. We're actually talking about how we implement AI into clinical practice. But this is also going to be a topic of conversation this fall in the UN uh, meeting, and uh, if it's going to happen in September, about uh, this intersection of healthcare, technology, and governance, and how, how we can combine all three of those into um, uh, solutions for things such as COVID. So more of, I would, you would say standards, governance, experts that could help uh, make these things clear to those that are, are technical, what did you say? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, bubbling up some of the technology. Uh, so, I mean, certainly a lot of this is for uh, decentralized identifiers, verifiable credentials, but how it intersects with existing technology with like X509 certificates or um, the direct trust framework, which is um, uh, with uh, the trust model for HL7 and or uh, OpenID Connect or the Heart Protocol, which is an extension of the OpenID Connect. And so I think that's, those are just like bottle, you know, boilerplate sort of technology. But I think, you know, I, there is a lot of discussion about the applications of those tech, tech technologies, the appropriate application of those technologies and how we govern them and how it impacts healthcare and impacts healthcare delivery models. And um, so I think there is, uh, th that, that I think is, is just fodder for great uh, discussion for where this technology can get us and what's the limitations of this technology or what's the ethical moral dilemma that actually th this technology brings. I mean, that was a great article coming out of Harvard about the, you know, the 
technology technological divide of, of have versus the have nots of actually if you do have a immunity passport what does that mean and if you it, what does it prevent people who don't have an immunity passport from traveling from just you know, uh, uh, the, the, the biasing people people that actually like they aren't now um, second class citizens and don't don't have that the same rights as people who actually like, who do have like an immunity passport if that ever becomes a thing. 100%. Um, those type of challenges are, are something we're all trying to solve. And, and I think having more discussion and even kind of design sessions within subgroup support too, like the interoperability support subgroup seems like that would be a, a great uh, avenue to start with as well. And maybe having a broader session here to initiate that idea and thinking and then go to the subgroup to then dive in a little bit deeper as well. So I definitely think those would be. Useful. Yeah. And I think that, that at least like, you know, having those, that um, discussion about where those touch points are and then reach out to the broader community. And I know Brian's involved with the uh, Linux for public health initiative and, uh, and there's other, um, you know, tr trying to create um, policies or even like the trust over IP network. Uh, like what, what is that? Like, what are the problems that they trying to solve and can we like, you know, um, uh, wrap this up into a nice package and explain or, or articulate and work through these problems and actually go to the broader community and to other organizations and uh, uh, to have these discussions and how we can actually work collaboratively to solve these hard problems that are facing us immediately. <laughs> We're all being affected. Does anyone uh, have any points of comment to that or, or something? Separate to add? I want a plus one, um, sort of the importance of, of, uh, of just the intersection of healthcare ethics and, and, and AI and, and their applications, um, how that affects the digital divide, the socioeconomic divide. Uh, all of these are important questions, I think. Um, I am personally a huge. Uh, sort of digital equity advocate. And I know some of my peers have been really distraught um, while COVID has been great and we've made monumental leaps in adoption of blockchain in mainstream. It has also uh, taken the world several decades backward in terms of data rights and digital rights. Um, and so I think there are all sorts of interesting questions here. and. Um, it would be lovely to explore that in, in the SIG. Um, but also, I mean, looking at what we we're talking about, like, um, and connecting that with what you were uh, mentioning before, Mike, um, something like this is sort of like a topic which maybe touches across the subgroups. And you were talking about collaborative working groups and sort of promoting the uh, different subgroups working together, as well as uh, seeing how that might play into the use case development group, for instance. I think all of these would be really lovely to explore. And I would love to maybe hear more about your thoughts, others' thoughts, and maybe even uh, Rich's sort of um, retro thoughts on how we can achieve this better and integrate topics like this into the regular functioning of the SIG and the subgroups, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think, uh, hold on. So I think that this could be a very great collaborative effort with the uh, social impact group within Hyperledger as well. There's been a couple discussions I've been on going into their meetings of how we can help solve, not solve this problem, but also uh, help connect the dots in this as well. So I, I think cross collaboration between others, uh, SIGs would be beneficial. And then uh, I'm sure we all have connections and resources that could touch upon these topics. I also, uh, in a survey as well, I'm not also going to have the time, like the requested time we can have for the future, but uh, requested topics and, and uh, uh, topics of interest and use cases of interest. I'm going to send out to the group and what kind of discussions we would like to hear. Uh, so this will definitely be added and, and Dr. Holt's uh, idea will be added as well. But I want to get community to uh, feel empowered to put in their thoughts because 
you know, when we have these, these groups and gatherings, not everyone may feel empowered to speak in front of everyone. They may be a bit shy, but I think adding in the survey aspect too can help them uh, feel, uh, feel more confident to be able to add in their thoughts of, of how we can be able to have these working groups be more effective too. Hey Mike, it's Erica. Um, I just wanted to say that I would love to have the group um, be more accessible to you know other clinicians like myself who might not have a background in technology, but can provide a lot of input on like adoption of of new technologies and really using these in the trenches and giving kind of a really different um, perspective on on everything. I think it's really hard to to get people like that to join the group because they are you know they we we don't really have any background in it. Um, so I just wanted to say that it would be nice to, you know, I think the use case group is a great example of trying to, trying to bring more clinicians on, um, just to give a really high level idea of what technology can do. Um, and I'm trying to do that, but I just wanted to say that it would be great to have more reach in that area. So Erica, um, this is Alicia and you're right on point. Um, you know, my background is healthcare and one of the reasons I was interested in was because Rich when I met Rich in uh, Cambia Grove he actually invited me to this group because he thought I would be interested because even though my background is not technical I have a lot of experience in different things uh, from patient care to um, how things work uh, from occupational health from so many other different things, thinking from the patient um, standpoint, from the provider uh, standpoint, and that sometimes what's a win-win for a patient is not the, the same thing for the um, for the uh, physician, hospital, etc. Um, so I agree with Erica. It would be interesting to see and get the you know. And I don't know if for you guys that are technical, uh, find any um, advantages to that. No, that makes a that makes a lot of sense. I, I first of all, technology can can be cool and can be beneficial, but if no one's able to use it, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, if if we don't have the ability to to let clinicians uh, feel comfortable when they're using blockchain-based systems or so on and so forth. It's not gonna be relevant and, and won't be used in the world. So uh, the more we can make that clear to people, the better. I, I know for one, I'm part of another group that's called uh, ACT IAC. They're based, it's, it's pretty much like a DC government working group to help uh, government industry understand newer concepts of technology like blockchain, AI, machine learning, et cetera. And uh, within the act IAC working group, I was part of a, a, a working group, I guess, within there, a subgroup that helped create a blockchain playbook that was relevant for federal industry, uh, potentially creating a playbook for, um, for uh, industry of, of healthcare and life science, or in particular, I guess, healthcare and clinicians uh, may be beneficial for us moving forward as well. Um, that's something I think we could we could create a separate working group and sessions and, and make benefit uh, to everyone as well. So, and and also cross event collaboration is great too. I know IEEE is looking to create a blockchain event based it or um, over in um, in uh, September and October this year, and they've reached out to to many uh, of us in industry to kind of help support for the event. I know Eric is a part of it as well as myself, and. Uh, and yeah, I think those type of events, now that they're all virtual, right? No one has an excuse other than, I just don't want to sit on my Zoom to come and see your thing. Uh, we could be able to, to help create one of those working sessions for people moving forward too. I just um, wanted to add something to Erica and Alicia's point as well in terms of um, trying to do transformative digital change in healthcare. One of the things that I experienced, I guess, is working as a clinician transitioning into digital health technologies was um, bringing on board like the change management ex exercise of not just clinicians but health executives for example and that and and also regulators and so I'm wondering if uh, we could you know also have these type of people um, in some of these working groups so we can get their pain points or 
um, difficulties with adoption of this technology as well, like where we need to bridge those gaps to get uh, sort of that collaboration and top-down approach as well. Marcus, I think. Yeah, calls for execs change to make the world go around. So. Yeah, exactly. I think there's so much resistance um, when it comes to those those points around getting executives on board, and um, especially when they're looking at uh, financial barriers to adopting this technology. So for them, uh, especially when we were doing robotics and electronic health records, it was all about return on investment and you know the cost savings and so on, not necessarily thinking about the patient. Um, you know the patient care at the at the end point but i really think if we can get those uh, groups involved quite early that would be great in terms of that uh, change management and and adoption but i think that also you know when you're talking about return on investment that's one of the things that a lot of uh, people in healthcare they always think about you know i'm going to mm -hmm. see these three to five years mm -hmm. but with the mm -hmm. the technology changing so fast, I think it's becoming less and less time. Yeah. Um, and it's also trying to explain what they, re I mean, really actually see the benefits. So when like, for example, I remember uh, people sitting in front of me trying to sell me a program or something like that. And it was like, okay, have you ever done this before? And I wanna see the numbers, what are the benefits? Mm. It's not an easy thing. Yeah, I think a, a, a specific ask we could do is, okay, I'm a clinician and I want to be able to get a blockchain-based system into my hospital or network of hospitals. How do I do this? Like, I think making uh, IRB approved, like, uh, or not IRB approved, but IRB guidelined working groups and sessions. And I know for one, uh, people that, two people we're all connected with and Wendy Charles and, and Sean Mannion uh, in the healthcare blockchain space, they created actually a, um, uh, like a guideline of how uh, a clinician could be able to use blockchain in their research and or a clinical from research and a clinical perspective as well. Uh, I think uh, even expanding on those type of guidelines or uh, making them specific to Hyperledger tools and uh, and assets or under the hyperledger greenhouse sorry there's dlts there's tools as well i think that could be a great benefit to industry too and and that could be a a link that you could just send out to a person you're connected to an industry and say hey uh, this could be a potential first step for you to understand what this technology is and why we believe it's beneficial uh, those type of things would be of, of interest for, for me and the group to, to try and build out what do you guys say I was just going to say there's there's so much literature out there like Wendy wrote a paper on compliance and you know things that healthcare organizations need to look at when implementing blockchain uh, because there's so much that people don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I think that there's a lot of literature out there that could be compiled and kind of reviewed when we look at this stuff. I, I, I know she has a great library, you know, that you can that I have access to that we could look things up on as well. Wendy's Hyperledger library is the most intense thing I've ever seen in my life. It, she shared it with me about summer, summer of last year and I couldn't believe how many articles and, and educational resources she had in that thing. It was, it was fantastic. So I think yeah. definitely a hyperlink maybe to, in our wiki page could go into things that she has, obviously with her permission, we need to have that. Too. Yeah, I can ask her. Um, it's all blockchain too. It's not just Hyperledger. It's, it's all blockchains in general, yeah. but yeah, um, great. It's healthcare and blockchain basically. Um, yeah, I think there's probably like a thousand articles in there, um, but it makes it easy when it's on, in one library to search uh, what your topic you're interested in and get information. So it's, yeah, it's a great resource. Also, one thing to add that I wanted to mention, um, is there's this group called Artifacts. I don't know if everyone has been connected in with them yet, but Artifacts, oh, there's Wendy's library. It's here. Richard's put it in the chat. That's amazing. Um, uh, there's also a group called Artifacts that is, is working with myself, Sean Mannion, Robert Miller, who's part of our team at Consensus Health, but also they, the, the leader of Artifacts is Dave Kachalko, who used to work at Elsevier and some others. And and there's a bunch of academics and research folks. Erica, Erica, you'd be great to add to this as well. We are curating every blockchain literature piece from uh, lay literature to academic literature to gray literature and, and trying to timeline that out from 2000, 
pretty much 16, 17 until now. We also want to have it more matured when it's from 2018, when things were actually not ICO scam type of solutions to now as well. And uh, I think that could be a good resource to add to this wiki page and then have people from the community add in their insights and thoughts as well. Um, so man, I need to get on some surveys. I need to get some things going out for everyone to, to see. So this is good stuff for me. Would that, would that type of uh, additional working group or, or um, knowledge creation be a benefit to the group? I mean, I'm gonna say yes, just because that's my background. That's what I do for work. Yeah now um for ibm so yeah i mean definitely i think that evidence is going to drive a lot of this stuff when you're trying to present it to organizations you need to have evidence you need to have not just you know uh, a cost analysis but actual is this going to improve how is this going to be better than what we have now and i think that's the way that we need to present it absolutely yeah i think this is you know one of this is alicia one of the other things that i think about is like you know actually seeing how some models have been applied and that they, that they work. Um, like I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I'm pretty sure you're all familiar how Estonia, um, I think is one of the most advanced technological countries. They actually are using all of this. It, it's, it's an amazing, you know, so I'm wondering also seeing things that, or reviewing things that actually have been applied and work. Mm. Um, and also to add to that point, Alicia, um, at the moment the IMD Business School is working in Switzerland is working on use cases in um, healthcare, and they've actually they're using my company as um, a, as a bit of a platform to write about how a, a startup company goes in terms of exploring the um, industry and looking at revenue models and so on for this. For, for healthcare and blockchain. So they've got the professor overseeing it. So it's gonna be a bit, they're, they're very interested in developments in this space as well. They're quite advanced in Switzerland. This is great. This is great stuff guys. And we have two minutes left, so I don't wanna um, burden us by putting an end. Uh, Rich, if you could, we have a speaker coming up. Is that on the 21st or is that on the 27th, they said, that they'd be able to uh, present with us? So that'll be, yeah, that'll be our next uh, scheduled meeting, which is two weeks from today. Awesome. So on 821, we have a new speaker coming on. Uh, I'm not as familiar with them. So Rich, if you can give a, an overview of, of their presentation for the group. Yeah, if you want to just click on the 821 link there, uh, that'll, the social media card is there. And it's really, it's uh, St. Gitz uh, is going to be presenting. Uh, just go to, yeah, go right there. You got it. Uh, so their team is going to be presenting on their blockchain solution in healthcare. Uh, this is a reschedule. We were hoping to have them this week, uh, and uh, they ended up, uh, I think they ended up with uh, a, an issue with, uh, uh, I think the, the team was taking uh, their exams this week, so we had to reschedule for that. Uh, but basically, uh, yeah, we'll have them in, in two weeks. It'll be a great presentation on their product uh, medical chain, which is a blockchain solution in the healthcare space, so it'll be great. Awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, hey, lots of great things to work off of and surveys to, to be added so that people can get receive their feedback and everything. Everyone, thank you very much for the time. The recording will be added into the, the Hyperledger 8, the, the Healthcare SIG uh, wiki here. And uh, I appreciate the time. If you guys want, have any other questions or, or uh, want to ping me separately, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn messaging and uh, as well as all my email uh, that I sent out earlier into the chat too. So thank you all for the time and uh, hey, we'll see you on the 21st. Thank you everybody. Bye. Great job, Mike. Take care. Thank you, Mike. And thank Bye. you, Mike. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.